it's the next level. Alright, just be cool until I finish the job on the grassy knoll. We'll get the time math and I'll ice the squirt. I just wish there was another way. There isn't. Look at him. What are you looking at? Look. You see something funny? Worst case of paradox psychosis I've ever seen. What's wrong? I Mind your business. feel bad for him. Mm -hmm. He's just a little guy. Everybody's a little guy. Wish you could pull off these you look like King Kong and the Hitler Youth had a baby. Luther, I, I don't have time for you to tuck and squeeze here. I count on you. Keep him under control. Yeah, I'll do my best, yeah. Right. Hey, brother. How you doing? He's gonna kill me, isn't he? <laughs> what? What, him? He's gonna kill you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Hey panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And I have to state, last episode, I was wrong about the song in episode 8. It was actually Pepper by the Butthole Surfers from the album Electric Larry Land album. I thought it was actually Beck's song Loser, but it's pretty funny. My memory is terrible, but when it comes to like pop music in the 90s, I guess, and, and stuff that was popular, because, you know, I, I just rang to my own bell with certain music that I was into and playing when I was in a band. But, uh, yeah, usually it's funny, too, because I'm actually able to get that within, like, 10 seconds of a song and figure out, you know, if it was uh, a song that I could know and I'd be able to ring it out off the top of my head. But, nope, I was wrong. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. That was my bad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so this week's episode that we're going to be covering is Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 9, 743. And the synopsis of this episode is, as the fives plot against each other, one of the siblings makes a big sacrifice to help Vanya, plus Lila learns the truth about her parents. Which is funny, too, because saying that as the fives, <laughs> it sounds way too weird because it's, it's pluralizing him. Yeah, yeah. And the number as well, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's, I didn't think about that when I, when I put the synopsis in there, but yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, this was a good episode. It was, uh, it was decent. You know, I don't have a lot to say about it. I went back when I looked, rewatched it the other day and realized, and I think I actually said this in my voicemail to Strange Indeed, that this is the shortest episode yes, of this entire season. It's like 40 minutes. And so, I mean, there's a lot that happens, but it's it's, it's a really short amount of time. All the rest of them are like 50 minutes or over 50 minutes or real close to 50 minutes. So it was really surprised me when I noticed when I figured that out, because I was trying to figure out why I didn't have a lot of notes for this one. And then I was like, let me look at the running time. And yeah. Sure enough. It's pretty short. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, a lot did happen within it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was very entertaining. Uh, I just yeah. love the idea of the fives battling each other yeah. and how everything <laughs> worked out and, you know, where things left off. And then, obviously, we, we learn a lot about other people and their interactions, mm -hmm. Handler and how she, you know, manipulates Lila and everything else that's going on. So with that, we should really get into our top fives. Absolutely. I wonder if it's too late to be unadopted. So you should go first. I'll go ahead and start. And, and my number five is kind of long because it, it basically covers almost the entire episode. But I think it's good to get the discussion going with that. And, and I love that it picked up right where the last episode ended. And I actually went back and rewatched the very end of the episode eight because I wanted to make sure that I was correct on that. That it, it literally starts right where we ended with Klaus and Allison and Diego at the FBI building. I love that Allison and Diego, Allison gets knocked out pretty quick. Diego, you know, he gets the hose and he 
he sends that down to Klaus so that Klaus can enter the room and be the one to hopefully save the day. But of course, Klaus gets knocked out also. And so Ben is the only one who's unaffected by Banya's power. So he's able to get into that room. And I this is where I say it's going to span the whole episode because right as he's about to enter the room, it cuts away to Luther and the fives. Yes. You know, and then we've got to wait several more minutes before we get back to that room. And we see Ben. I love that he connects with her in that kind of dream world that we saw yeah. in the, the, the last episode. And uh, it was just that whole reunion with him was so tough touching I, I i teared up you know as he's telling her that she's not alone at the table in fact I'm, te- I'm starting to get emotional now i'm getting the feels now uh just with it that he tells her that she's not alone at the table anymore yeah. and that you know that flashes us back to the first season where they used to show her you know eating her breakfast alone eating meals alone uh, all these things because the, the the rest of the team would be out doing a mission or or something like that and just the the, the realization that that you it, it made me realize that five has been hanging around this entire time he's been there he's seen everything that uh reginald hargreaves did to her mm-hmm. he knows and you know i was full-on bawling man as as he like just faded away and vanya she comes out and she doesn't destroy the fbi building so suddenly we have changed the future again you know mm-hmm. so what what is this going to do the timeline what is this? Uh, uh, oh, I've got later on about Diego too, but that's just, I kind of wanted to start there. And I think you had a similar thing with your number five. Yeah. Well, my number five will be that, you know, first off all the siblings fill except for Ben. Mm-hmm. And then he, you know, obviously he comes to Vanya's aid, as you stated, and it took a lot out of him to sever what was going on within Vanya and Harland at that point, because it was kind of, if you think it about it, it was intertwined. Mm-hmm. And she was uncontrollable, and he, you know, Ben was able to possess her to a point to sever that bond to free her. And to me, that that was a lot. You know, it took him a long time to get that, you know, p- to that point with mm-hmm. uh, Klaus at one point, you know, just to just possess a body. Now he's able to get in there and do that. But within this, he's able to go even deeper, darker into her mm-hmm. mind and we find Vanya is upset about everything because all her memories come back to her all at once at that point and then Ben tells her that she's not alone like he stated at the table and brings her back and he has always been there and you know a little bit of a spoiler so if you guys want to skip ahead a few seconds but the next episode basically we get to see that you know why Ben is where he's at and yeah, he's always been there watching. So, and, you know, and the fact is also he sacrifices himself for Vanya. And I hope this isn't the last we see of Ben, but like I stated in the next episode or this last episode, we do get to see more of Ben. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, I haven't watched, you've watched the, the last episode. No, I, I actually, so, I, so, uh... I went in a few seconds in and i didn't realize it <laughs> well, no i mean in your original i know you don't remember all of it but in your original binging of it yes you, you yeah said you, but so you kind of know i kind of know but the thing is is also i don't know because i forgot about it <laughs> and then right, when it right. when it went right into the next episode i go stop 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 i was like all right I oh, too much. okay i see what you're saying but okay, the I see, thing is I see what you're saying. but right. also the fact you know it's like we do need that resolution about ben but Mm-hmm. my overall feeling is I would definitely love to see him next season if it's possible, yeah. you know? Yeah, we'll see. Um, it's it's going to be interesting because it, it seemed to me a very final kind of thing that even he was like, you know, I've been, I've been dead for 17 years and I'm, I recognize that I, I'm ready to go. And, and I've had this connection. He gets his hug, you know, he says, can I, and he whispers something in her ear. And that's, I'm assuming that might be what you're talking about that in the next episode, because he, he tells her, tell Klaus something for me. And then we don't get to hear what it was that he said. So yeah, I'll be interested when we get done podcasting here to, to uh, watch that 10th episode and, and find out what's, what's going on there. So yeah, uh, my number four is, is pretty short and sweet. It's just Aiden Gallagher's uh, performance is just masterful in this, in this episode as he's in, as we're seeing 
five kind of lose his mind and as he's <laughs> talking to to luther i just his facial expressions and you could just see uh, this kid is if if he is able to keep this level of acting chops as he grows i could i could see this kid uh being somebody in the in the future like like i'm talking high level uh, cause he's just really, really good. And of course that fight, uh, between the fives with, with, <laughs> as they, they, you know, the, the older five, the, or the mustached five looks at the younger, the, the kid five and is, you know, do you want to do it? No, you do it. And then kicks, kicks Luther in the nuts and then, <laughs> and then they're fighting. And every time Luther kind of starts to come back, that one of them teleports over there and punches him again. And <laughs> it was just, yeah. And then he finally gets the gun and, uh, but yeah, that's just Aiden Gallagher's performance in this uh, was really, really good. And the guy playing his older self uh, it, it does a really good job as well. They really must have spent some time together because their cadence is the same. Even the older guy I noticed in this episode, he even has a lilt. He has a sort of a very similar lilt to his voice that uh, is, that Aiden Gallagher's five has. So I thought it was really, really cool. Yeah, definitely. And you know that they must have worked together based upon that mm -hmm. and aiden gallagher is not really a kid kid he's in his 20s so no 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 he's 16 he's like 16 17 years old oh it's been yeah all right, so. i was i was mistaken on that at the beginning of this ser of this season uh when i said that i thought he was in his 20s and somebody uh messaged me and corrected me that no he's like 16 wow like he's like 16 he may have turned 17 over the the break or something but he's yeah no he's a teenager well he's, hopefully he's, you know there are casting agents out there hey just pick this kid oh up. i'm sure Man. i'm sure he's already he's he's already he's i mean this isn't the first thing he's done oh know, i know that from what i yeah so so i'm sure he's but i'm uh just really really impressed with his performance oh he definitely has talent right there and definitely gets into the character mm -hmm. i just hope he continues on which you know i'm looking forward to yeah well, my number four would be, you know, definitely Luther's struggle with both fives during this whole episode. Mm -hmm. Playing to both of them, basically, he might have been unwilling or understanding, but the, the way he handled it was pretty good, you know? Plus, the fight between both the fives, that speed is like a future fight while Billy Idol's song, you know, Dancing With Myself plays in the background. Yeah. And I really thought the visuals were really cool with the slow motion, especially when they, you know, it's like, oh, it's like you hit him. No. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like they both hit him at that point yeah. in the balls. Uh, I love both of them, you know, kick, kicking Luther at the same time. But, you know, you, we get that end result in those scenes at this point that we'll talk about further on because I'm pretty sure they're in our top fives yeah. as well. Exactly. So that was your number four? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my number three is is going back to the handler. and just uh, It's interesting that we find out uh, that she's the one that ordered uh, Lila's parents killed, but that AJ is the name on the paperwork for it. Correct. But I also have to give myself a little bit of props because I think I was the one uh, back in whatever episode that was, episode two or three. Yeah, you brought it up. That I said, I think it's five that kills her, uh, that killed her family. And we're going to find out towards the end of the season. So I kind of pat, pat myself on the back a little bit for that, <laughs> that, uh, uh, that I figured that one out. It was um, old five, by the way. Everybody. Yes. Well, I mean, five, it was, it, but it was five. That's what I meant is I said it yeah. was the assassin five. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't kid five. It was mas mustached, mustached five that, uh, <laughs> uh, that killed Lila's parents. And so then I love that this, she kind of went, you know, she starts to pick up that, that knife off the table when Lila tells her she knows who it was. And then when Lila says it was AJ, she puts the knife down because she realizes that, okay, somehow AJ manipulated the paperwork so that it didn't look like the handler was mm -hmm. the one. So I'm, I'm interested because this was one of the things that remember back in episode two or three, when we, when we had the handler that AJ said was in her, one of the mistakes she made or something like that. He mentioned 743. So it's it's interesting to find out here. Maybe we're going to learn more. Maybe maybe we don't. But I just I found it really interesting that she's you know she tries to manipulate Lila mm. uh, into either I couldn't tell if she was trying to manipulate her into obviously Lila wants to kill five, but now she, uh, she's kind of manipulating her, going well you know Diego must have known about this the whole time, so maybe you should kill him too. It was kind of that thing. And then I audibly gasped the first time I watched her eat AJ. 
like just drop him down her throat. I was just like, what? I just laughed. <laughs> Honestly, I laughed. I, 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 when I came back, when I watched it again, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I remember that. I was, I was like, like she's, she's got him in her, in her fingertips. I go, she's not well, going to eat him. And then just drops him down. She didn't like, even like even chew yeah, on him. She just swallowed him through. Not, yeah, not even a bite, not even a chew. So like he's in her stomach just being. Oh, oh, oh. Swimming around Ugh. her stomach acid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> weird, weird stuff. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Interesting. So so what's your number three? My number three, uh, that would be the scene with when Sissy confronts Carl to get Harlan back. You mm -hmm. know, the fact that Harlan deflects the bullet into Carl from himself after Carl shoots him. I think it was a natural self-defense mechanism within mm -hmm. him or just pure sheer luck because, you know, he's not in control of any of those powers in any way. Yeah. And it was interesting. I have this in my notes that the alarms went started going off at the switchboard after Carl is killed. And then when we cut to the very end of the episode, they're showing all those screens when the guy is telling her that time is telling the handler that time, there's something going on with time. Mm -hmm. And you see all the screens and one of those screens is focused on that farm and there's something going on in the barn that looks like Aunt Vanya's type of power. So I don't know what that's about but i thought that was really interesting that because we've been wondering this whole time what is the connection with this family with this farm family whereas everybody else had some sort of connection to either kennedy or to reginald but what does this farm have so I, i'm gonna be really again i'm really intrigued for the last episode and i'm i'm kind of disappointed that we have come to the end here i'm curious if it has to do something with history but yeah, yeah. You know, what's their last name? Maybe we we'll go through that and maybe check that out. You know, a few listeners out there want to go through that and. Try I don't have they said. I don't think they've said their last name. Have they? Mm, I don't I, know. I'm, I'd have to go back and look to see if we've we've heard Sissy Harlan and uh, Carl's last name. Carl. Coral. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I stepped on your number three. Is that all you had for your number three? That's or? all I had. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So my number two is the fire extinguisher. I actually went back and watched the, the, the first episode of, of season one. Cause I had forgotten that Klaus, when the vortex starts to appear, uh, Klaus comes running out of the house with the fire extinguisher. Yes. He throws the fire extinguisher into that was like the, the first episode of season the very one. first episode of season one. Yeah. 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 And, and so it was great to see the return to see what happened with that fire extinguisher that it went through the vortex and knocked out uh, or knocked down Luthor, uh, Luthor, <laughs> Luther. Um, and uh, so I thought that was really, really cool. And uh, then, it, you know, it was Luther actually that kicked mustache five into the vortex. And mm -hmm. of course, then we see the briefcase ruined there on the ground. Cause it either got a piece of in the vortex or, or got I'm, cut I'm off. A, within yeah. The it got cut off. I think because, because mustache five had it in his hand mm -hmm. when he was kicked into. So half the briefcase went into the vortex and half of it didn't. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, so uh, 14 days older five is like, now what are we going to do? And, you know, we have that shot of Diego running, towards the motorcade and i'm assuming he's he's gonna fail to save kennedy i, I yes because he he actually tackled the decoy hargreaves mm -hmm. so and he hears the shots so we know that he failed to save kennedy that uh, apparently as far as we know um hi, you know history is preserved into what it's so what our i guess if you want history would our, be yeah, our prime history would be is is kind of preserved. So I that was that was kind of cool, and it'll be interesting to see how this plays on Diego's psyche because you know the, the entire time he's been back here in 1962, 63, he's been trying to prevent the Kennedy assassination. Yeah, it was his devotion of trying to prevent mm -hmm. that one historical disaster. As soon as he realized that he goes, we could just prevent this and have right you know, Kennedy and because. Back. Right, because then he because he says it was the you know the well the destruction of the FBI building was stopped so because of that we're not going to get the nuclear war so now I can save Kennedy and it won't it won't hurt the timeline or whatever correct yeah so yeah uh, but of course we're going to find out probably in the next episode how that affects him yeah and my number two would be well the fact of younger five or Luther just kicking older five <laughs> into mm -hmm. the vortex you know and I say younger five. But it's only 14 
days old. 14 days, yeah. yeah. Older, younger, five, younger, yeah. whatever. I, uh, my eyes getting cross eyed just thinking <laughs> about it anymore. Whatever, into the portal, but then giving him the math about what happened so he doesn't become quote unquote tiger beat. But the briefcase <laughs> still gets messed up, as you know, we talked about. But yet again, this happened before. We've seen it before. And yeah. Yeah, if you want to go on about that, that's uh, I no, remember uh, it seeing it. Now it's like, wait a minute, we've seen this before. Yeah, did we see half of the briefcase? I don't remember that in the first season. I will have to go back and look and see. But now the second season, I think when uh, they kicked the briefcase and it got broken. Or oh, oh, that one yeah, scene when, when they were when, supposed to meet up. That said, no, yeah, I don't think it got broken. I think he threw he threw it into the vortex, and I think it it could, got I don't know. So yeah, that's that's we talked about that when it happened in the episode. Whether that's going to show something, I don't think that's the same briefcase. I think it's different. Mm. But yeah, that that is an interesting theory. Whether there's something going on there, but you know, it's it's one of those things that you you he does give him the correct math, or he tells him what the yeah. correct math was supposed to be. I don't know how that works with his power if he has to focus on it. I, but what I'm yeah. what I'm assuming again, and we'll probably find out in the next episode. What I'm assuming is though because of because of Luther kicking him and everything getting kind of thrown out of whack, I'm assuming he still goes to 2019 as the and becomes the younger Number five. five. I was getting yeah. under the impression that with the way things have changed, maybe it was different in a sense well, that in what you know, or yeah. maybe this is the true event that had created it for him to be young five. Right. That's what I'm saying is I think I, I think that I think this is is the yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think this is why why he became younger five mm -hmm. is because he got kicked through the portal by Luther and he's seeing his younger self or something like that. And and so basically what what the um, 14 days older five did was he created his own future. You see what I'm saying? Like he caused his own future to happen, which we see that in time travel stuff all the time. When somebody goes back to prevent something and they find out that they're actually the cause of it. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah. so, so yeah, I, 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 think I was that's, hoping for the latter half of something a little different. Maybe we get something different out of it, but who knows? I, I just, I think it would mess things up because you know, the, well, the, the current five, up, so. <laughs> the current five that the current five that we have would change. Yes, I, that's what that's yeah, what I was saying and it last, would be an alternate. Episode. It would be an alternate reality yeah, at that yeah. point. It'll be interesting. We'll it. see. We'll see what happens with with episode ten. Yeah, so. and um, to add on to that, it would you know Kennedy is still shot as you spoke about on the grassy mm -hmm. knoll, but by Reginald Hargreaves. No, no, no. He was shot. He was shot by Oswald. He was shot by Oswald. Okay, right, I was right, under the right. impression because you had that old man with the crazy laugh that Luther saw in the very right. beginning of season two with the note and everything. And right. I saw, so that I assumed because the way they dressed him up as Reginald Hargreaves, that Hargreaves was somewhere else shooting. That's why. No, no, and that's and that actually goes right into my number one because it's something that Reginald makes very clear when he when he steps into the room mm -hmm. with the majestic majestic twelve. He makes it very clear that he did not want Kennedy assassinated. Ah, he makes it, he tells them okay. he says I told you not to not to assassinate Kennedy. He was oh I caught that there I was very specific to catch that in this the most recent watch of it because I was like oh he didn't actually that's why he sent the decoy his decoy self there that Diego tackles ah. and it's that, that robot, whatever in <laughs> with, like you said, with the laugh and he walks in and, and that's the first, one of the first things he says is that you weren't supposed to kill Kennedy. And they're all like, well, you know, we're, we're going to do what we're, whatever we're going to do and you can't do anything about it. And mm -hmm. we're going to, we're going to tell the world. Um, but you know, he says that, that we have that line. What, what really keyed on for me was they tell him that with Kennedy dead, they they can protect his interests on the dark side of the moon. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting because that plays into again. Remember Luther, Luther was on the moon on the moon at the, and he was at the beginning. To, yeah, and, he and even though he was understand why he was there and right. why. Hargreaves sent him up there for oh, how yeah. long was he up there? It was ridiculous. I'm not. I'm not sure how many years he was up there, but we find out that all that data he was sending back, Hargreaves wasn't doing anything with. But now we have this interesting thought that there is still something on the moon that Reginald was involved with. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we see that in episode ten, or if that's going to something that's going to play into uh, future seasons. 
Um, you know, of course, and then they, they threaten him. They tell, they say, well, tell the world who you really are. Or I can't, I have to go back and watch it again. I don't remember if they said who or what. I think they said who you really are. Yes. And that's when Hargreaves takes his face off. Yes. And we see the back of his alien head. Hey. Yeah. And uh, then apparently from what it sounded like over the credits, he's killing the Majestic 12. Well, it, it makes you think, though is the majestic 12 and this leads into my number one as well because you know that was my number one reginald takes off his mask mm -hmm. and reveals his alien self and he kills the majestic 12 but with them stating that you know who you are meaning that are the majestic 12 part of other alien races or something maybe yeah i'm not sure i got the impression the impression i got was that they didn't realize he was an alien and, That's and what so, my impression, and, first impression and, was, and then going into the conversation and thinking into it made mm -hmm. me think that, like, who you are. But the thing is, is if they knew who he was, but they never saw his true self. Right. That's so. Yeah. So I think yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you have anything else for your number one? Mm, that was all. Okay. Um, well, we've got a few notes here. Um I already talked about this switchboard, so my only other one I have that we haven't talked about yet is uh, this the humor again, and I loved the whole Blazing Saddles moment uh, in the in the in the, the the stairwell there with Lila, where he says, "I have something to show you," and he reaches into his pants. It just reminded me of that whole Blazing Saddles. Now me reach this excuse me <laughs> while I whip this out, you know, and they're all like, oh, you know, and so I thought that was really really funny when he says, hey, he, but he specifically says, and it's it's funny because. It's coming from a short person he says i have something big to show you <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so uh yeah just just the humor i'm glad they're maintaining that humor well the humor has always been there since day one i believe so yeah one note i would have would i love the fact that young five states that he has seniority due <laughs> to him being 14 days older than mustached old five yeah. <laughs> and yeah aj's note in the fishbowl to her about 743 that was pretty cool you know lila found out that it was that aj you know sent the order to kill her parents then the handler you know swallowed yeah. the whole aj i was really glad when i saw you know? when i saw that you put this in the notes because i had not seen that i missed that the first uh first time i watched it so in the in my next two watches i made sure to pay attention to what was going on with the, the fishbowl there and i was like oh yeah when he's spitting out the the pebbles and mm -hmm. and putting them in a, in a certain order so yeah i thought that was really cool i was, I was glad of you to, to put that in there but i mean it's it's very clear in the the flashback they show us that it's the handler who's who's stamping that paperwork so i'm not sure how aj became the one to blame for it but it's it's i went back and, and in fact i rewound the scene a couple of times just to make sure I wasn't, but it's definitely the handler's silhouette that we're seeing who stamps that paperwork. So Correct. It's, it's, yeah. You know? Yeah. It was a, an undermined thing behind mm -hmm. AJ's back. So yeah. You know, see it, it shows you how manipulative that she could be. The, the next three, well, the next one would be Lila's, you know, admits to Herb that she loves Diego, you know, in the mm -hmm. hallway or on the stairs at that. And yeah. the way she just like you know attacks her about certain times during that scene too is pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I have one of those quotes in my quotes when we get to quotes. So the visuals within this episode were really good, especially when Ben looks into the violin to find Vanya, plus yeah. the battle of the fives. I thought they did really good with the effects and the shots, and the ones with Ben going through Vanya's mind were really really cool. And the last one would be uh, Vanya hugging Ben as he goes. That was oh. such a tender moment, though. Yeah. You know, it's like not only does Klaus know, you know, he's there, but so does Diego. And now Vanya. And then, you know, uh, Luther and Five sort of had a clue, because, but they didn't really believe it, I don't think, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But So we've got some quotes here to share? Yeah. I'll start off with the first one, which would be Klaus saying, Okay, Klaus, you could do this. You fought in Vietnam. You survived a family of seven. 
and you once wore a sarong to a fraternity party and got a shitload of numbers. And that was as he was trying to get to Vanya in the room. That was great. Beginning. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. And in that same scene, when they're when they're crouched down there and Diego's talking about the plan, uh, Klaus says, what you guys should savor. You're great at all that hero stuff. Uh, he doesn't say stuff, though. Uh, listen, listen, Vanya would understand because she has realistic expectations of what I am. And what I am is sexy trash. So. <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was great. She has realistic expectations of what I am. <laughs> That's so funny though. My next one would be old five to Luther. Every guy is a little guy to you. You look like King Kong and Hitler you uh, a Hitler youth had a baby. <laughs> That's great. That was great. I loved there was a moment in the, the office there when the handler says everything is a test to Lila. And I thought that was I, it might be a little bit of a reach, but I, I that's that's a phrase that is used several times in the movie The Recruit with uh, Al Pacino and Colin Farrell, where there's everything is a test. So I thought that was, it was cool. Yeah. My last one would be the handler saying, honey, blood is thicker than water, but you can drown in either. And that was to Lila. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I missed that one. Uh, and my last one is is uh, when Lila, we were just talking about it, when Lila is confronting Herb in the stairwell, she says, all right, sweaty gerbil man, tell me where Diego went or I'll staple your colon to your nose and let you die on your own farts. <laughs> I, I left that one to you because I saw that. That was, like, and, uh, that was a his, good one. <laughs> yeah. And his reply, I loved how they put it and his delivery of his reply is, is great. Said, That's so vivid <laughs> like and even in the closed captioning that like, like put pauses in between each word because it was just really really funny that is so vivid <laughs> <laughs> so cool so we got some feedback uh, do you want to read it sure uh i this is from our, our good friend daphne hi daphne hi mark and steve sending in my thoughts on umbrella academy season two episode nine such an episode with all the feels watching alice and diego and klaus try to get to vanya unsuccessfully was sad i can't believe ben is gone and i wonder what his message to klaus is i'm glad he was able to connect with vanya even if it did take him away from us Maybe he will find some peace. Herb is becoming one of my favorite parts <laughs> of the show. And I enjoyed his bike ride through the file, the file cabinets to find uh, a big secret. It's so it's too bad that Lila didn't learn the complete truth about all who were involved with her parents deaths. And who knew Harlan had it in him bye bye carl sorry not sorry <laughs> one more episode to go and still so much to wrap up looking forward to ending it strong me too daphne i really do and i i, uh, I i'm glad you brought up that bicycle ride through the cabinets because uh, seeing that that three-wheeled bike it just reminded me of uh my my grandparents and they used to live this was in the 80s they lived in a mobile home park and that's what all those people would ride was these three-wheeled bikes and they would decorate them for july 4th and have like a july 4th parade with all their three-wheeled bikes and uh so it was kind of touching to see that yeah definitely and thank you daphne for sending that in so we'll move on to comic news and in comic news well oddly enough you know supergirl will be ending its run on the cw with season six and i really do enjoy the cw shows but i think their run has come to you know, a final end at this point, you know, they work so hard. If you guys who listen to the next level podcast network, DC primetime did, you know, all those shows, they did a cumulative of like doing the flash, Supergirl, Batwoman, all this stuff up until final crisis. And it makes you think, you know, and I knew this and Ben and I spoke about it, you know, Final Crisis is pretty much what it was, is that's what it was at that point. You know, how more much more can you go with these shows? So, you know, they're ending Supergirl at this point. Uh, Batwoman, I figure, will probably have another season. Legends of Tomorrow, probably maybe one or two. Eventually, they'll end the CW line. Whether or not if that Superman show or Lois and... No, nah, it's not Lois and Clark, but... 
it's going to be basically. It's something like that. It's like Superman and Lois or something like that because yeah. Ben mentioned it on the last podcast I was on with him. Yeah. It's, it's either Lois and Clark or Clark and Lois or Lois and Superman, something like that. It's a couple. It's the coupley name. So. Yeah. So they, you know, they're, they're starting to run its end in that course. So, you know, everything must come to an end at a certain point. So I'm accepting of this. You know, I love those shows and I still do and I still keep up with the Flash. I'm still curious as to what they're going to be doing with that as well as Supergirl and Legends. So I'm just hoping that, you know, they they don't come out and say, well, Legends is going to be ending really soon, which I'm pretty certain that it will in another season or two. They probably won't re-up and say, hey, well, this is the last one and I'll probably come up probably at the end of the season. And next part of news would be the Emmys happened, and unfortunately, I did not watch it. But there are winners that we do enjoy that are comic-related within it. So, Watchmen won for Outstanding Limited Series. Uh, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, you know, got Best Supporting Actor for Watchmen in a limited series or movie. And Damon Lindelof got outstanding writing for a limited series or movie, as well as uh, Core Jefferson. So they they were really good at, at the writing with that. And an outstanding lead actress in a limited series went to Regina King for Watchmen, which we both stated I think as we were covering that that series during that time. I really enjoyed it. And yes, it's out there on Blu-ray, so if you guys really want to go out there and you want to keep it, you know, I don't think HBO Max will be holding on to many titles along the way. I don't think you can get older shows and stuff, but it's out there on Blu-ray. I saw it, saw it recently while working. And then the last bit of news is The Walking Dead The Alien is available in hardback now in comic book shops. So it was originally never pressed. It was originally just a download issue and pay as you want. So you didn't really even have to pay anything. You could pay like a penny for it. So it never made any money, but Skybound felt the need to release it in some aspect. And I got it for the cover price at my local comic shop for like nineteen ninety nine, And apparently it's on Amazon and a few other places. And I guess certain comic shops were upping the price because it's in demand and I didn't realize it you know it's like I was told and they're like yeah you have this in your pull list and I'm like oh oh wow didn't even know this came out so they were kind enough to do that for me and I, I paid cover price so now you could get a physical copy at your local comic shop if they could back order it you know it might be a, a reprint but you know it's pretty cool to have that it's kind of like when the Negan uh, comic came out not too long ago and the fact that, you know, these are one-off, you know, comics of that genre. And I do enjoy them. So I recommend that. Go out there and get that if you can. And to keep in mind, you know, The Alien is based, if you follow The Walking Dead, it's based upon Rick Grimes' brother who went off to Barcelona. And, during, and this is happening during the initial part of the zombie apocalypse. So... If you're interested, go out and check that out and get it. All righty. So we've got some podcast recommendations. For me, uh, I got to guest host or guest on the We Have to Go Back Lost Revisited joint podcast between Podcastica and the Next Level Podcast Network this week uh, with Ben and Dez. So we had a good time recording that episode, and uh, that's uh, highly recommended. And the only other thing I have to mention is not really a podcast, but I definitely want to recommend if anybody has Apple TV Plus and uh, you, if you're not watching Ted Lasso, man, uh, you need to be watching Ted Lasso. It is a breath of fresh air during this time the writing is really good it there's unexpected things like there's there's tropes of certain romantic comedies and things that happen um that they do it way different they don't follow the tropes like people are there's a, a scene I, I don't want to spoil anything but there's a scene where two people are actually honest with each other about their feelings and about what they what they're looking for in a relationship and i was just like whoa this is not normally what tv does so uh, <laughs> so check out ted lasso on apple tv oh definitely and apple if you listeners are out there if you don't have the new 4k apple tvs that are out there if you buy or purchase a new 
Apple product. You get Apple TV Plus for free for the first year. And after that, it will be, I think, five ninety nine every month after that. And they come up with original content and programming. I think I had mentioned it before, but there are a few. They have the morning show that's on there with Jennifer Aniston and uh, Steve Carell. And there's also, uh, what was that old? Amazing Stories by Spielberg. They brought that back for uh, like at least I think six episodes, so I watched all that stuff. In the meantime, during the pandemic, because I had <laughs> a new Apple TV and it was free, and there's another one that's on there that I'm forgetting. But regardless, you get new original content from Apple TV Plus themselves. So that, that's something to look into and get if you're interested. So for my podcast recommendations, I would recommend Run For Your Lives podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Daphne and Paik will be covering the movie The Host, which should have just dropped as we're recording now. So It did. It dropped yesterday, I think, actually. Yeah, this they, morning. Uh, Daphne usually drops it around Friday night. So that can be heard now if you're interested. Also, you could listen to Rima and Paik on Strange Indeed with their coverage of the Umbrella Academy as well, and that can be found on the Podcast Network. Yes, and they will be starting up The Haunting of Bly Manor from Netflix as soon as they finish Umbrella Academy season two. And they've also done a, I, I don't know if they're going to do every episode or what, but they did a, they released an episode uh, of the, the Great British, British Bake Off. Off. That's the one. <laughs> uh, so that's, that, that's an episode on there as well that I've got to listen to. Cool. And, and like what they're doing with the Great British Bake Off, we'll do a one-off as soon as uh, Walking Dead comes back on for its season finale. Uh, I factor that, you and I will actually do our recap of that particular episode, which is funny too, because it's been so long since I've been, yeah, I watched anything from season ten. So now I have to. I go know back. I'm gonna have to go back, <laughs> yeah, and try to try to find. I, I've got it on my DVR, I think. So. So we'll do a one-off on the finale, and and that will be within when we do the boys, because sure. as soon as we finish off this particular show. We're going right into the boys, and and like I, I stated it before, I think the first two uh, episodes that we're, we should do, we should just do them two at a time, and then we might have uh, a few guests on at the time, yeah, we'll, too. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, since it's it's uh, it's going to be wrapping up here pretty quick, so yeah. I, I didn't realize it was only eight episodes. This, yeah, uh, this yeah season, it, so. it goes really quick, and... You know, we try to stay current, but, you know, things overlap and whatever. It happens. And then there'll still be more of that for us to cover, I'm sure. Absolutely. So, and, Absolutely. It, and if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to send them to our Facebook page. Email it to us, however you feel. Absolutely. All right. Well, to submit your feedback, as Mark was starting to say, or as I will say, uh, we can be heard on any of your podcast player of choice. If you can't hear us on your podcast player of choice, what are you doing? You know, contact us, tell us which podcast player we're not on, and I'm sure Mark can take care of that. Uh, you can also check out our website at panels to pixels com. You can submit uh, feedback through our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Also, you can email us, as Daphne did, at panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to is spelled out right there in the middle the number one at gmail.com you can leave us an old school voicemail at 845-350-2095 and please somebody call us because all we're getting <laughs> is like your car warranty is up or your student whatever. loan <laughs> yeah you know come on give us a call even if you just want to say Hey, you don't own a car or whatever. Call 845. <laughs> Maybe I'll call just to leave a message. Uh, 845-350-2095. We are also on YouTube at Panels to Pixels Podcast. So give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to us and uh, let us know what you think of the podcast. Next week, we will be wrapping up the Umbrella Academy Season 2 with Episode 10. I don't know the title of it. I'm not going to because I don't want to get spoiled by reading a synopsis. Oh, yep. So that's next week. So send us something in. If you have watched the entire season, you can now send us your thoughts on the whole thing. So Umbrella Academy season two, episode 10 next week. Awesome. And where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be found right here on panels to pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback to other podcasts that I love. 
that my friends do. So you can also hear me on a new podcast that will be releasing, I'm going to say, within the next week. And it's called Adrenaline Cinema. And you can find that on the podcast. I love that name, by the way. I love that yeah. name, Adrenaline Cinema. I love that. I think that's a great name for a podcast. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I I worked so hard in trying to figure out something that could be a little bit different. Yeah. A I lot of people I recommended I... Straight Adrenaline, but there's also a, a podcast name that's so I do, I it need to differentiate it a little bit. <laughs> I love it. I think it's I think it's great and I will I would love to be on any time you'll have me. Well, there's going to be rotating podcasts. Uh the first one will be so and I'll tell you guys here it's going to be about Die Hard. And my co-host for that episode will be Ben Beck because he loves Die Hard as much as more than anybody, I guess, than me. I don't know. So. <laughs> I'm pretty – dude, I went and saw that like 12 times in the theater because it was right after I graduated high school, before I joined the military. And uh, I was – I went and saw that thing multiple, multiple times. It was in the theaters forever. I remember. <laughs> yes, I do. I love that movie. So you can find that on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network coming at – the end of the week next what's, week what's an email address for that do you have one yet yeah set up? it's called adrenaline cinema podcast at gmail.com so you Great. can just send your email there if you want go to pirate core entertainment's uh website or you can just go straight to adrenaline cinema podcasts facebook page which is pretty much if you just search for it it's right there we're all set and all ready. You just leave a comment, and there's already a post for a comment for Die Hard. So you could send whatever thoughts you have right to there, and we'll get right to it when we get on to the actual podcast. And to let you know a little bit about the podcast itself, it's about all those action movies, adventure, suspense movies that get your adrenaline pumping. And that's the point of that. And I just wanted to do something a little different than what we do here, uh, but also do it on my network on that side. So, and obviously it will be rotating co-hosts. So it'd be myself and somebody else as well. So um, you're definitely going to hear Steve on it <laughs> at a certain time because I already have a fir the first 20 movies already listed and ready to go. It's just a matter of recording, getting them uploaded and getting them out to you. So stay tuned here. And we'll keep you up to date or just check out the Pirate Core Entertainment website. As for me, I love watching TV shows probably a little too much, but I send voicemails to a lot of different podcasts. Well, yeah, a lot. There's like three. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but I am a regular uh, uh, sender of voicemails to those podcasts, and uh, I absolutely love, love it. I love being on this podcast with Mark, and uh, so you will always continue to hear me here unless I'm on vacation or something. But other than that, uh, right here on panels to pixels awesome well that's our show for this week thanks everybody for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night <laughs>